Hello, everyone, and welcome to our March webinar. I'm Denise, your host, and back with me to present is Guru Don Lindsay, to whom I will hand off momentarily. First, let's get some very quick housekeeping out of the way. And finally, Don is back. Those of you who are our regular attendees may have seen this overview of Don's breadth and depth of experience a couple times, but let me impress you further at the risk of embarrassing Don, who is a business analyst for several for several companies currently. And among those companies, seven different versions of QAD are used. In addition to his decades of hands-on experience, what's specifically relevant to today's topic are Don's thousands of sim loads among roughly three dozen QAD maintenance programs. And on top of all of that, Don continues to conduct training on how to use sim load functionality, among many other types of QAD training as well, of course. So, Don, when you're finished blushing, I'm ready to hand off to you. So, uh, thank you for that uh, effulgent uh, introduction, uh, Denise. I don't deserve it, but uh, thank you much. So, uh, today, uh, Having looked at uh, MRP last June and July and uh, forecasting in October, we talked about uh, CRP in November. Uh, we did advanced forecasting in January. I thought today, instead of talking so much about functionality, I thought we would talk about data because guess what? QAD runs on data. You use the functionality, but you can't do anything with the functionality unless you have the data. So <clears throat> let's talk uh, specifically about this thing called SIM, Computer Integrated Method. So today we'll do a quick intro to SIM load, what it is. We'll look at some helpful applications and documents that uh, you can use when you do your SIM loads. We will talk specifically about an Excel add-in that helps you create these uh, sim loads. Then we'll talk about how to create a template in Excel that will allow you to create the data for uploading into QAD. Then we'll talk about the 3615 menus in QAD, the sim load menus, and uh, some other information regarding uh, the sim load process. So what is sim load? Well, sim load is basically a keyboard replicator. That is, it performs as if it were a human entering data into your QAD system via the keyboard. It emulates the sequences of frames and fields inside the maintenance screens. You can also do uh, create uh, reports, etc. And it's a way to get a lot of information, massive amounts of information into QAD basically at the speed of light. So it's a very handy, handy tool because we all know that uh, in order to run QAD, you need lots of data and sometimes you need to change things quickly. Sometimes you need to uh, add data very rapidly. This sim load process allows us to do that. It is the official definition. It's an ASCII file and it generates data, and then that data is loaded into QAD for processing. You can do it either in uh, batch or uh, continuous mode. I will go ahead and show you the batch uh, functionalities, but you can hook it up to a machine or whatever you need to uh, do continuous mode. There are uh, several uh, applications and helpful files and documents that uh, are available to you. And as with anything in QAD, you're going to have to get used to some new terminology, uh, fields, files, uh, group IDs, error messages, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't know what they are, uh, go into the uh, support uh, functionality and uh, look it up for Denise will give you my email and you can uh, you can ask. So here are some of the uh, helpful uh, files to talk about uh, database definitions, uh, Excel, uh, I use Snagit, they love Snagit. You can use uh, the 
little snippet program in uh, Windows if you want, uh, or you can uh, use FileZilla, Smart, uh, FTP, WinSTP. You know. So the first one that we have to be uh, cognizant of is what is called the database definitions. And uh, we asked this question on a registration, and it looks like most of you have access to the DB uh, underscore definitions, that PDF. I would suggest you get uh, a hold of that because this is going to give you all of the tables in QAD, and it's going to give you the table name, the field name, the label for the field, columns, uh, format of the field, decimal places, all of this information is going to be uh, pretty helpful for the uh, sim load process. The next file that I like is uh, the file relationships. This document uh, is not so much for sim loading per se, but it does give you a good feel for how tables relate to themselves, what the key fields and links are, indexing, that kind of thing. So you, you might not need it, but it's another uh, tool that you should be very familiar with. Uh, text applications. I like TextPad. It's uh, one of uh, many Notepad comes with Windows. Uh, there's TED Notepad, Doc Notepad. There's uh, Git Diz. There's lots of these. TextPad, uh, I like. It's uh, written against the Windows guidelines for accessible software design. It's got cut and paste. Uh, there's a spell checker in it for those of us that don't know how to spell. Uh, you can customize menus. It's uh, really kind of a handy little uh, little tool. Then <clears throat> the interface to QED. Uh, I would assume most of us use .NET, but uh, there are also other uh, ways to get into QED. Net term is uh, a nice one. I like that uh, interface. It does cost money. You got to have a license for it. Uh, or you could use Net or Putty. Putty is another uh, interface tool that you can use to get into QAD. Or yeah, as we'll see, we can use uh, .NET also. Then <clears throat> we come to this little thing called Sim 2000.xla. This is an add-in, and I hope uh, most of us are familiar with add-ins to Excel. This is what we're going to be talking about. This was, uh, from what I can gather off of Progress Talk, the website, it was originally developed by Logatum, and uh, it's been around so long that it's now uh, public domain software. So you can uh, get this software. If, you, if you're a member of Progress Talk, sign up for it. I'd recommend that in any sense of the word <clears throat> because Progress Talk has uh, some specific uh, blog areas that you can ask questions about QED. It's just a great tool. I ran across this uh, posting on Progress Talk from a gentleman in uh, the Netherlands, I believe, and you can see here that uh, he's attached this uh, little Excel file into the progress talk. You just download it, and then you probably might have to have somebody from IT, or if you're good enough, you can add this uh, add-in to Excel, and it's called uh, Export to Sim. And it's going to appear as a new tab on the top of your uh, menu options. So that uh, is uh, highly recommended. You can also, if you want to, you could use a text pad or a notepad, or I've even done uh, sim load uh, file creations in Word. Uh, so you can do it, but this is really uh, a very easy way to. Uh, get into the sim loading process. So now that we have some idea about the tools that are available for us, let's talk about how do we actually create a template for a particular menu in QED. Uh, before we start, there's going to be a lot of information 
that you're going to need for sim loading. File names, menus, numbers, dates, group numbers, output files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I did is I created my own little uh, sim tracking spreadsheet. And you can do the same. I keep track of all the 2,400 uh, sim loads I've done since 2005. It tells me what database I've loaded it to, uh, comments, all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's a good idea that you have some mechanism to do that. I also recommend that you run data before you do a sim load and you run data after you do the sim load. So you've got a picture of what you had versus what you now have, and you can make the comparison helps to validate the, uh, the data. So everybody should have their SIM tracking spreadsheet. So this is, uh, this is a typical example. This is Rebecca. Rebecca's off in uh, marketing, and she wants to update the prices for next year. And so here she's given me the new price list, and she's got some uh, columns on here. And so it's a spreadsheet that is going to be presented to you as the SIM loader so that you can get this data into QAD. Here's another example. Uh, Spencer, who is uh, one of the planners down in the supply chain, he's given me a list of uh, status code updates. So he wants to update uh, the status codes in, in this case, the item master file, so that uh, he can use that in his uh, planning session. I am having now these basic pieces of information from the users. And now that I've got the data, now I can actually start to create the sim load uh, template in Excel that's going to allow me to create this ASCII file. So sim load is an input ASCII file that contains a value for each field in the emulated program's frame. We'll talk about frames uh, in just a second. But the file must be in the exact order of that maintenance screen, both in terms of frames and in terms of fields within those frames. So they should appear in your spreadsheet in the same sequence or the same manner as if they were to be entered manually. The sim load file requires specific format and uh, the correct population in order to navigate those files. So here's some of the rules that we use for SIM input. Uh, the first line of the SIM file that we're going to create has to start with at, at, batch, load, and then the program name dot P. The last line of the SIM file has to have at, at, end, so that now QAD knows that you're going to execute, let's say, the item master uh, maintenance screen in 1.4.1, and you're going to put in some data, and the last line says that you're now going to execute or complete that sim load, and you're going to go on to the next record. Uh, you can use tildes if you have longer uh, pieces of information. I've used tildes uh, numerous times to enter comments into uh, various screens and the master comment screens, etc. There are carriage returns or what we call a commit. And for those of us who are familiar with QAD, when you're in a menu, you are presented with frames within that menu and then fields within those frames. And so when you hit F1 or enter, it commits that data to the database. So this is the same thing that your sim load file is going to do. It's going to commit. Uh, spaces uh, represent enter keys. Hyphens uh, represent uh, data that already has uh, information in it that you don't want to override. And a period represents an end. Sometimes uh, we call it an F4. There are some other rules in regards to uh, character information and date fields. These have to be. Uh, set off by quotation marks. Uh, for specifically, the date field has to match your D parameter format in your progress. 
so that if you were going to enter a date, uh, if it was DMY, you'd enter 31013 for the date or MDY 01313. So you've got to uh, concern yourself with those kinds of uh, data formats. Here's just a uh, little recap of those rules, double quotes around characters, uh, spaces, separate fields, tildes, line feeds, hyphen slashes, uh, and an up uh, caret can in, uh, indicate a null. Uh, the other function keys on the top of your keyboard can't be simulated, but uh, I've never run into a case where you need those. So the first thing you need to do is to understand what the the menu looks like in terms of how you're going to navigate that field. If you are in a particular menu, in this case, I've shown the item master maintenance, the item number, if you hit control F, either in the uh, character or GUI or in .NET, you're presented with this uh, list of information that is available through credit through the control F. By the PT dot PT part is the table and the field. So that's going to be very important for your uh, sim load. This uh, got the field label, uh, batch delete active, which we'll talk about later. Is it generalized code validated? Uh, sim load pays attention to those generalized codes. So you want to make sure you've got that as a password what the program is, the frame number, uh, the rest of the information about that field. So this control F is a very, very important part of your uh, sim load process. You can get really kind of the same information off a of browse. If you go to a browse and you right click on the top of a column, you're presented with the browse properties. And this uh, gives you the program name, the table, the field, the label, the format, the type, basically the same information that we saw in the data dictionary. <clears throat> Menu structures. Uh, for those of us that are still on SE and uh, even for those of us who are used to using .NET, there is an underlying menu structure in QED. I don't know what's going to happen to that when we get into Channel Islands, but at the current point, uh, every program in or every menu within QED has a menu ID. Uh, the A menus, uh, any special menus that you've created, 99 menus, 98 menus, whatever, uh, it's a good idea for you to know what the menu is, the execution file, uh, those pieces of information regarding your specific environment. So the QED uh, menu structure is very, very helpful. Uh, you can get the same information by hitting the uh, right click on a menu, and it also will give you some information about that menu structure. Uh, roles and permissions. God, I could spend uh, probably a couple hours on role and permissions. As a matter of fact, Alex and uh, I are working on uh, maybe a couple of webinars later in the summer that uh, speak directly to roles, permissions, socks, configured screens, users. There's just a whole uh, bunch of information that it's helpful to have in regards to roles and permission. It suffices to say that if you are sim loading, you as the user have to have access to the particular menu that you are loading. So if I'm Spencer down in the supply chain and I want to update 3.1.1, the detail item maintenance, I have to be able to get into that through the regular security. So roles and permissions, uh, I am a super user in most uh, cases, so uh, I don't have to worry about that, but you as a sim loader need to make sure that the person who's gonna do the sim loading has that uh, security access. So. Here's a spreadsheet that I've created from Rebecca's uh, request for uh, data load into 1.10.1.1, the price list maintenance. So what we had said is that you need to go into that price list uh, function 
and pay particular attention to the frame and the field within the frame. So here we have frame one, field one, frame one, field two, frame one, field three, four, and five, six. Now we have a frame two of the, uh, the first field and frame three. So you need to construct your template uh, in the same frame field sequence that you would as you go through uh, the menu itself. Then, and probably before, you should pay attention to uh, on your little tab, your add-on tab that uh, you got from installing the sim2000.xla add-in, you've got this little drop-down that gives you the MFG Pro Sim, and we want to look specifically at this control uh, <clears throat> tab. So the control tab allows you to uh, keep track of the cell, which is going to give you, you're going to want your uh, actual .p program name, the fields in three and four, in this particular case, or reference fields, and you put any information in there. I like the English language uh, name and the name that the programs have given the uh, label. And then here's your spreadsheet that we talked about in terms of the field in frame sequences, and then you start your data in row six. So if we relate that to uh, the spreadsheet, here I've got the uh, price list, you can see that I have defined that in terms of where each one of these uh, begin. I've had spreadsheets where I start the data in row 12, and I've got references from 2 to uh, 10. Uh, you can put the program name in any cell you want, as long as you point it in the right direction. So you have to pay attention to how you've got your control file set up in order to create this SIM data. There's another tab called SIM Formatter. And I haven't used that much, but uh, I do use this uh, SIM Checker. This is a very valuable uh, part of the SIM add-in. It uh, is gonna give you a feel for how your spreadsheet is constructed. Uh, is it in the right sequence? Do you see any uh, <clears throat> errors or uh, inconsistencies or discrepancies. So this is very handy. You really want to have this message display when you've done the run on your SIM checker. So that tells you that you've uh, got a pretty good uh, SIM load database that you can now create. So now I've created my uh, SIM load template. I have named it uh, however you want to name it. Uh, the more data you've got in there, I think the better off you are. And you're going to hit this now export to SIM. That's going to create a, a place that you can save that either on your C drive or uh, shared drive or wherever you have uh, that. Uh, you can save it as a .cim extension. I've saved them as PRNs or TXT files, however, and then you get this nice little message that says, ah, array, the sim load file has been created. So now you take that sim load file, and if you were to read it in one of your text uh, data, I uh, have text pad, you can see here that I've got the records that have been created. There's my add at batch uh, load, here's my add at end, and here's the data that is actually going to be put into QAD for, in this case, the item master file. So you can see I'm changing the release to yes for the uh, PO uh, await status, and it's active, and I'm going to change the uh, supplier. So the little dashes say don't change the information, but the uh, character is uh, highlighted again in those uh, quotes. So you take that file that you've saved someplace on your hard drive and you're going to use FTP or FileZilla or uh, whatever uh, FTP program you want 
to use and you're going to put it in your MFG home uh, directory so that when you execute the SIM process in QED, QED knows where to go look for that. Then you're going to uh, execute. In this particular case, I'm going to do uh, net term. So I've got my uh, host IP, my telmort, uh, what kind of terminal it is, and I'm going to connect to QED. Now, <clears throat> here's the key. I'm going to log in to QED and with my user and password. Again, I have to have access to what I'm going to load. And here I'll say it probably a couple more times. Never, ever sim load directly into the production database. Always execute your sim loads into a test or a sandbox database. If you screw up on a sim load and you're doing it in the production database, you can really screw things up. And that would cause you to have to reload. It would have to have users resubmit a uh, transaction they've done during the day. It is a pain. I did it once. I'll never do it again. Always test load into a sandbox database. So you log on. Again, your user ID, domain, what you're going to do. Uh, your user or your super user admin, and then you're going to go to our lovely 3615, the SIM interface menu. There's only four menus in here, uh, 3615, one, two, three, and four. I personally have never used four, but I use uh, SIM one, two, and three on a regular basis. So you're going to go into 3615, one, and 3615, one, gives you the option of creating a file or continuous. I normally use the file. And here's the program or the file name that I put into the MFG home uh, subdirector or folder on my server. And I hit next and the system creates these group IDs. I don't know what programmers call them. Group IDs are actually record numbers. And you can see that uh, I'm up to 300, uh, 41,000 records. I've uh, been doing this for about 10 years. So an old friend of mine told me, don't worry about it. You'll never run out of things. So just let the uh, system generate your uh, group IDs and then always go back to your tracking spreadsheet and record uh, the group numbers and the file numbers and how many records and what database uh, you did it into. So you've got uh, a knowledge of where you're, where you're headed. Then you go to 3615.2 uh, and you put in those uh, record numbers or group IDs and you output to another file there. Record that file in your tracking spreadsheet because you're gonna need uh, record to that. And so at this point you can uh, encounter errors, okay? Uh, and you will always encounter errors. Uh, errors are probably a good thing. And you need to understand why the errors were created, how they were created, what the uh, process was that caused QAD to give it an error message. And so you can go and you can look at that uh, file that was created from 3615.2. Uh, and you can see that there are lots of reasons why uh, you've got, these are just some of the reasons that I've uh, recorded after uh, doing this for about 10 years. And this is the one I want to see. It worked. That means that the sim load did it. Uh, word of caution, uh, the programmers who work for QED, the program error descriptions are not always descriptive of what the actual issue is with the data. So you got a little, you got to be a little cautious as to how to interpret those errors. So what you do is you go back, you find out what uh, file you use to update that particular process, and you go back and you analyze the spreadsheet and discover what the error was. Well, here in this particular case, I discovered that I checked the control, the sim control, incorrectly. I used the wrong. Uh, date format. And so when Excel created the SIM data, it used the wrong date format, didn't match my .d uh, progress 
parameter, and so the system aired out. So I correct it. I go back. I re-input in D3615.1, get a new set of group numbers, and now I go and do the 3615.2. I don't get any errors. Now I can go to 3615.3, and that is the SIM data and report delete. So this uh, allows you a look at uh, what the data was that actually got loaded. I always check yes on the display data. I always check yes on report data with no errors, data with errors, unprocessed data. Just go ahead and check them all. I have never uh, hit the delete reported data. As I mentioned, I'm up to 347,000 uh, group IDs, <clears throat> and I just don't want to delete those out of the system, so I always leave them that way. <clears throat> Again, print that uh, report to a file, and this is what's going to show. This is a successful load. Here I've loaded 1,580 records into, uh, in this case, the item master. I've got zero database errors, no program warnings, and no program errors. So I now have a successful sim load. I'm very, very happy. Now, you can also delete records with SIM. If a, a file or a menu in QAD has this batch delete active box checked, you can create a SIM load with a little X at the end of the line, and it will actually delete records out of uh, the SIM load. Again, caution, do it in a test database, make sure you know what uh, is happening. There are right now 29 files or menus that allow you to do SIM deletes. Uh, customers, suppliers, uh, master comments, uh, price list data, item master. So uh, you can do some very, very inventive things with uh, the program. I also uh, checked with some of the guys at uh, QAD support and uh, if it's if uh, a particular menu is not the sim load delete active, you can probably uh, pay some money to somebody and make it that way. So these are uh, very very helpful. There are lots of useful articles out in the support knowledge base. I counted 764 articles in the uh, database on sim loading. So you've got lots of information. Again, ask questions. There's lots of people I saw from the registration. People have uh, been using sim loads for a long time. So uh, you've got a lot of help out there. This gentleman, Joe Mendendez, has a great little video out in uh, the QAD uh, orbit. I think they referred to Mr. Trump as. And uh, it goes through uh, specifically with the creation of the ASCII file, the add at uh, batch float, add at end, et cetera, et cetera. I'd highly recommend that you, uh, you get a chance to go look at that uh, little video that Joe put together. So there's seven steps to importing your data. First, you gather the data that must be loaded. So you go to talk to Rebecca, and you talk to uh, Spencer, and you talk to uh, Frank, and you get the data, and then you import that into uh, Excel, and you determine the positions of the data by going into the menu, looking at the frames and the fields. You format your data for the export, so make sure that your date formats are right and your decimal points are right and uh, all that kind of thing. Then you check the data in Microsoft Excel with a little checker. If it's good, you export it. And lastly, you import that into QED with 36.15.1, 2, and 3. Uh, Alex and uh, Denise and I put together a little uh, comparison chart here. There's lots of ways to get data into QED. Uh, there's EDI, uh, the accelerator. We've talked about SIM loads. Uh, Alex has uh, a whole bunch of real slick. Uh, data loaders that are available, and then you have uh, menus. So we tried to compare the uh, 
expertise required. You can see with the EDI and QExtend, it takes a lot of knowledge to do that. Uh, SIM load, yeah, you got to know what you're doing. If you want to do it manually, just go ahead and do it. Uh, some take some training time, some costs. There are some maintenance costs involved, implementation time, and then we put in some uh, pros and cons. So you can kind of take a look at that. So the takeaways that I want you to have from this uh, quick little expose on sim loading is we now know that it's a computer uh, integrated method. It's basically a keyboard replicator. We looked at how to create the sim file in Excel by looking at the columns in the Excel file and relating those to the fame and field formats. Uh, we talked about errors and tracking and keeping track of what you're doing. Then you upload the data and validate the data. And as I said, I always do a browse or a progress uh, feed or a database dump on the data before I do it in my test database and after I do it in my database just to make sure that I've got it and I uh, now have a successful uh, sim load. So never perform sim loads directly into the, in the production database. You will be sorry. Use a recent sandbox database. You can do major damage. And I've done this, and it's not fun. There are, uh, it's easy. Once you get the hang of it, sim loads are uh, real easy. I usually use the rule that if you can enter the data in a half hour, you don't need a sim load. Just have somebody do it. If you're starting to look at uh, the data entry process for uh, more than an hour, uh, thousands of records, then you probably should think about doing a sim load. You can save lots of money because it's cheaper to do a sim load than to have uh, go out and hire a couple of uh, college uh, students to come in and do clerical labor. Saves time. I can sim load uh, those 1,580 records we did for the item master file in less than three seconds. So it's very, very quick. And it actually gives you better control over your data. So do sim loads. It's a fun thing. Any questions or answers? Or question, questions, and we will attempt to answer. Uh, we have some upcoming events. Next week is the Midwest User Group Spring Conference. So if you are attending, drop by our booth for a chat and to enter our drawing. Or better yet, attend one of our presentations. There we have on Monday, Dawn is presenting Shop Floor Control. Where is that work order? And on Tuesday, we're joined by two clients to present our case study from Chaos to Control. You can find more details about each of these on our website. And spring webinars. We have more educational webinars lined up, and Dawn will return for both April and May. Show me the money and the guts of QAD MRP. Registration is open, um, and as always, links are available at the bottom of all of our communications. So you'll be able to click right on our encore at the bottom there if you want to get yourself registered. And, of course, on our website as well. Um, I also want to mention real quick that in your control panel, if you didn't notice, at the bottom, there should be a handout available to you. We made it uh, available, that slide of Dawn's, the comparison of load methods. So if you wanted to download and print that out, that's available to you. And also, if you can hang on at the end of the session for just 10, 15 seconds, we have a couple of questions for you, including uh, what you might like to cover in our webinars. We are preparing, as Dawn mentioned earlier, our summer schedule, so we'd love to get your feedback on those. Uh, Don and Christian, is there anything else, or are we good to go ahead and wrap up? No, I just wanted to thank uh, Christian for his uh, always uh, wonderful expertise on the uh, technical side of the process, and as I said, QED is fun. It's one of the things as a business analyst I like to do because it gives you immediate feedback as to success. So it's uh, it's good. I'd, I'd encourage anybody who has never done a sim load to at least go ahead and try it. It's, uh, it's a great uh, exercise in knowledge. Thank you much, Denise. Great. No, thank you, Don, very much. Okay, so we will go ahead and, and wrap up. And while you're comparing your data load options, be confident that you are right. There is 
a way to do it better. Find it. Just stay the course and know that we are here to help. I want to thank everybody very much for your time today. And if we don't see you at the conference first, I surely hope you'll join us again next month. Have a great day, everybody.